Hello and welcome to today's live stream. We are so excited to have you here. Today we're going to be talking about the L Mount Alliance. So if you get your questions ready for both Panasonic and Sigma, we are going to get them all answered. While you're writing those down, also let us know where you're joining from in the comments below. Looks like we have a couple people already joining us. Two and a half minutes before we get started. If you could just let us know where you're joining from. Hello, 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 and good morning. I hope you are having an awesome day. Uh, we the, the doors are open, so you might see customers kind of walk in behind. Uh, so we're doing our best to keep everybody nice and healthy today. And I wanted to, I'm starting off this uh, live stream without my mask, just to remind everybody, we have to wear our masks when we're in the store. So uh, when you walk in, you'll see signs and everything posted, uh, but we are taking this very seriously and making sure that 
everybody stays safe and healthy. So let's see who is joining us so far this morning. We have a good afternoon from Twinsburg. Dave, I hope you are doing well. Les, hello, good morning. Hope you are doing well. And then we have our friend Jim Summers. Guess what day it is? I'm probably going to get taken down for copyright like my other videos, but Mike, 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 hump day. God, that was a good commercial. I absolutely love it. So one thing that we haven't really got a chance to talk about is the Elmount Alliance. And if you haven't heard of the Elmount Alliance, it's this partnership between Leica, Sigma, as well as Panasonic Lumix, where they came together for the full frame system and they kind of collaborated on the mount. So you can take a lens from say a Sigma lens and put it on a Canon or uh, onto a Panasonic camera. So the same thing, vice versa. So, you know, Sigma came out with the FP, you could take a Lumix lens and put it on there. So we're gonna talk about that today and we have a list of questions that we wanna go through, but also we wanna open up for any questions that you might have. So I brought a few of the top minds in the photographic industry. Uh, my friends Jack as well as Brian. So let's go ahead and unmute them and get them into the call. Hope everybody is doing great. How are you guys doing today? Doing wonderfully, TJ. Good to see you again. Absolutely. Hello, hello. Mr. Brian, I hope you're not frozen over there. No, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> good TJ. I'm so excited. <laughs> No, I love it. So one of you guys could probably do a much better job at, you know, talking a little bit about the Elmont Alliance and tell us what is the Elmont Alliance and why is it important to photographers? I'll let Jack go. He's the, he's the one that's never short for words. <laughs> you know, I, I try to uh, defer to age, but that's okay. So, um, so yeah, Elmont Alliance is a, uh, is a gr association comprised of Panasonic, Sigma and Leica um, designed so you have the best possible images and uh, as well as video. So it's a mount where you actually have three vendors producing um, different bodies. So Leica is producing bodies in full frame. Uh, Sigma has just produced a body. And then Panasonic has also produced a tremendous amount of bodies. And the whole idea behind the L mount, from my perspective, just speaking as a user, is it gives me tremendous freedom in full frame and access to a tremendous assortment of lenses that I might otherwise not get. Um, the other advantage to something like the L mount um, is that you have so many more body options as we talked about. So as a photographer and a videographer, I love that I can you know, take my um, S1H and I can drop a 24 millimeter prime, which uh, Panasonic doesn't have quite yet, and be ready to rock and roll. Um, same way as a customer says, you know, gee, I really love my, my Leica, but I really want to have a telephoto zoom you know, hey, can um, does that 7200 F2.8 work on it? I'm like, yeah, it works beautifully. That's the kind of ideas. A huge ecosystem of lenses and cameras, and uh, it benefits everybody. So a question that I have is, you know, how are these are all, they'll act like natives. So it's not like we have to worry about certain things not working. Is that correct? Or is there yeah, some things that don't work? So, you know, you always hesitate to say the word never, but I've yet to find anything that doesn't work perfectly as advertised. So yeah, the, things like stabilization and EXIF data and just even just like stuff like exposure, the L mounts made to tremendous quality standards. So um, and also you have to don't worry about having a kind of a weak link in the system. You don't have to worry about, you know, am I compromising quality somewhere along the chain? Absolutely. Right. So the only, so anything that actually has like a native L mount made by Sigma is going to work flawlessly. Um, the one kind of caveat that I get questioned about is how does the MC21 work? That's our adapter that you can take a Canon, like Sigma Canon EF lens and adapt it over. So that opens up a huge, huge amount of lenses you can use. But you do use some functionality with the adapter, but anything with a native L mount lens on it doesn't have any functionality loss. So now, Brian, you've got a billion adapters. Like you've got three now available for the L mount, if I'm, if I'm. Um, right? I have yeah, PL, PL, EF, and SA. Oh yeah, I can do have SA. I for, sorry, yeah, I, I forget my own lineup. Uh, yeah, so SA is our our mount for uh, the Sigma lineup. Uh, it's the MC twenty one is going to take a, a photo lens and put it over. Then we have the MC thirty one, which is designed for cinema lenses. 
So for PL cinema lenses, so say you're shooting the FP or say an S1H in a, a bigger production and you're mixing the footage in with say like, you know, a Venice or, you know, an Ari or something and using PL lenses, the adapter will allow you to go on either of those type of cameras and, and throw those lenses on there without having to compromise your lens choice within your production. So. And, and Brian, can you just tell me, tell them my favorite feature of that PL adapter? I know it sounds like a small thing, but let's say I'm using a large anamorphic lens like my buddy Matt. What's the cool thing on the, uh, what, what's different about your PL adapter? So with, I don't have it right in front of me, but there's actually like a, there's a screw hole that you can permanently attach the, the adapter on. So when you get into cinema lenses, they're a much larger size. So having the ability to, you know, permanently attach and lock that adapter on and give, give you rock solid stability is, is very, very helpful. So it's not going to flop off or come loose or anything like that on a, you know, twenty thirty thousand dollar lens. You want to have that added security. Just yeah, that, that's what I like about the system. I'll let you talk to you, Jay. Sorry to cut you. Um, <laughs> is that I love that you have little, you have small lenses like a Sigma has got a 45, our 16 to 35 is very compact. And then I can, you know, go to the most large and massive lenses and they work equally well. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool ecosystem, a really cool mount that, boy, is it proceeding fast. It is. And that's one thing that I wanted to point out is, you know, when companies made this jump from, you know, mirrored to mirrorless, a lot of the hesitation is with lens choice. And what this alliance has done is opened it up. Like Panasonic came out with their full frame within the last couple of years. So, you know, if you look at other brands, they've had a little bit more time to create those full frame lenses. And we're seeing that with Nikon and Canon where they're slowly starting to trickle out. Whereas with the Elmont Alliance, how many lenses are there in even the Sigma? And like, do you guys know like the total number of lenses that are available right now for the Elmont? So, go ahead, go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so, I mean, I'll speak to us. We have uh, we have four totally designed from the ground up uh, mirrorless lenses, and then we have the other, like our art primes that have been developed to uh, for DSLRs that we have adapted over. You don't lose functionality with those. So between all that, we have 15 lenses. Um, what's the exact number you guys have, Jack? Gosh, we got uh, two teleconverters, six lenses by my count. And then we've got a few more that we say uh, are on the roadmap for uh, com coming uh, sometime soon. Yeah. So you can see and that there's like like so many options for users that are just switching over to, you know, this full frame out of this. Maybe it's their first time into mirrorless. There's so many possibilities. A question that we did have come in, is the L mount only for full frame cameras? No, um, I, I can answer that one, and uh, thank you. I think it was Alec. It, it popped up very fast. Oh, I'm um, sorry. <laughs> the, what the people don't realize is that um, – I'm sorry. Less. less. Um, so, um, no, the L-mount is actually not a new mount. Uh, Leica has been producing cameras um, featuring the L-mount uh, which um, or a variant of it for five years now. So, no, there are um, plenty of products like a, the Leica CL, which I, I know TJ was looking at at one time. Mm -hmm. um, it's a crop sensor, and you can totally put a full-frame um, lens on it, and it'll work just fine. Um, however, Panasonic is committed to, for our crop sensors, micro four-thirds, and for us, L-mount is full-frame only. But if you wanted to put a full-frame Panasonic lens on a Leica body, absolutely. Excellent. And so let's jump into a little bit about the mount. So tell us what are you know what's unique about the L-mount compared to, like, let's say, E mount or EF, you know, specific to, you know, how is the build quality? Is there something about the size of it? I mean, tell us about the actual mount. Again, I wanted this to be a good balance of very technical, but also, you know, just open ended for people just getting a little bit of information. So let's jump into the more techie stuff. So, what is it about the mount that makes it special? Very dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Jack. Okay. Um, so what I like about the mount is that, first of all, um, to, to your first point is the mechanical durability of the mount. And it was a mount that was designed for full frame from scratch. Um, I think that's a huge thing is that you actually have a mount that was designed not only for mirrorless. Because remember, this is Panasonic's um, uh, second mirrorless mount. We have a tremendous amount of experience working with mirrorless in the, fourth, in the micro four-thirds mount. And before that, uh, for mirrored um, four-thirds. 
But the L-mount was designed for a wide flange system, uh, for a, a short flange distance, making it easy to adapt. Um, and it's allowed to have a significantly larger um, opening. That means that you can get relatively compact, super sharp, wide angle lenses. So it's designed to be a, a really durable, flexible mechanical mount. And then unlike other mounts, because we talked about, you know, with my brand, friend here from, from Sigma, is we've made, you know, we're working in partnership to get as many lenses out there as possible. For some mounts in mirrorless, you're going to find that there's limited, uh, sec uh, limited additional support. Absolutely. And I just wanted to talk about having shot the L mount for a little while is just the durability of the actual mount. If you look at it side by side with other brands, it is thick welded stainless steel. So I would have no problem hanging larger lenses off that mount and worrying about any flex because it's made of that, you know, very thick stainless steel. So even the mount itself where everything connects is super, super strong. And I think that's huge. And like yeah. Jack said, oh, go ahead. You know, what I like for that, too, is I like the fact the way the mount is contract, uh, the flange and the mount's constructed. I don't have to worry nearly as much about water or dust. It's just, it seems like it's really rigid, and I don't have to worry about the, the entry of particles. Absolutely. I mean, the, that heavy-duty mount allows you to, you know, take something like the Sigma 105, which is absolutely stunning and gorgeous, but is not light. And you know it's not going to, you know feel like you're going to bend the mount on it. So I, the, just the durability, I'll agree. It's just simply stunning. So, uh, and now were these, were all of these lenses and the mount, was this all designed for mirrorless or was it designed for um, like older mounts and then just like adapted over for L mount? The, the L mount the, as a I whole didn't like, finish your question, TJ, sorry. Okay. So like, was this only made for mirrorless cameras or is this also for mirrored cameras as well? No, this mount's been developed. Uh, I, I, I'm guessing. I haven't talked to the original Leica engineers, but strictly for mirrorless. But that, that's as far uh, that, from yeah. what I know. That's the case. Yeah, the mount was designed um, specifically for mirrorless, and um, with modern amenities, because we know the direction of modern mirrorless. Things like stabilization. Stabilization might have been a niche feature a decade ago. Today, it's pretty standard. You know, how many times you go into pixel connection? And you know, people ask, well, does this have stabilization? Well, more cameras and not the mirrorless have stabilization. So yeah, it was a mirrorless mount and a forward-looking mount, uh, really designed for that mobility of sensor. Excellent. And then, so let's talk a little bit about the modernization and some of the modern features of the mount and the lenses. So Panasonic uses the DFD technology. And so how, and that's constantly changing over time. So how do you, like, do the lenses need updated for that? Like, what's the process to update the lenses like do they have firmware in them that need to be updated so let's talk a little bit about that so i'm going to use brian as an example of this because brian had to update his one of his own lenses on an s1h so i can talk about how wonderful it is with i'm using manly panasonic glass on a panasonic body although i do have the wonderful 70 millimeter macro i mean you're putting the frame so he can oh look he already picked it up <laughs> um, it, it's awesome but brian you had to use you were using my uh, using an S1H, and but you were using mainly Sigma glass on it, right? You had to do a firmware update. How uh, painful was that? Um, it's incredibly easy. Um, you download the firmware, put it on the card, and then run the software, and it'll go. Do you want to update a lens? You hit yes, and it, it updates it. So yeah, all all the all of our lenses are going to have firmware on it. And to be honest with you, you want a lens to have firmware on it. Uh, I might. Like, you know, I'm, we're not the only company that does it, obviously. But, you know, over time, cameras evolve, and you can update the soft, basically the software of the way the lens works. You can improve your algorithms on how they focus, um, all those types of things. So you want to be able to have a firmware in your lens to update. So a modern lens is going to have a firmware. So Yeah, there's a computer inside to control a motor. I mean, that's really what it is. And this yeah. is not like installing a, gr a graphics card driver for your NVIDIA card. It's way way easier so don't think you're gonna you're gonna have to get stuck and yeah. you know if not we like to place uh, you know my, my buddy kevin best uh b rad cone we like to visit pixel connection all the time you know and we love to do firmware updates Absolutely. so uh, if you can't figure it out even though i think it's simple you know when we get back to normal we start with doing more and more events we're happy to help you out Absolutely, and I would I would attribute it to like buying a uh, lens without a, a firmware on it right now would be like buying a computer and not being able to update it. You know, there's new viruses that come out all the time. The computers get better; they have to work with newer software. 
that's the exact same thing that you need to look at for your lenses. So it's super important that your lens, you know, does have that ability, but also just how easy that process is. And just to reiterate, you simply download it to the card, put it into the camera and go into the menu and hit update. Like you don't have to connect your camera to your computer. You don't have to connect your lens somehow to your, it's no, you just save it to the card and hit go. It's super, it's a very easy process. And I love that they're constantly evolving over time. And that's one of the things that initially drew me to mirrorless was the cameras are getting better over time. So it's a really good investment for photographers to make that switch to mirrorless because these companies are constantly adding features. And a lot of times they're not small features. They're adding a lot more capability, whether that's like the latest update from Panasonic with that's coming out for the S1H where they're adding raw capture. They're adding these cameras are getting better. They could have just said, hey, you have to buy this new camera to get that but they're getting better over time. And I think that is key. Um, that's a really good point, but can we back it up just one th second? Yeah. I mean, I know that Brian's a PC gamer. I'm a nerd. You're a nerd. No offense, TJ. Mm -hmm. um, it, but we, we, if it, you have a Mac or a PC, it doesn't matter. It works the same, right? Just so, so we're clear. Like mm -hmm. th These cameras are platforms, and it's just as easy to update it if you've got a Mac or a PC. People ask me all the time, you don't need either. It'll work just fine, even if you're, you know, even if you're a Linux user and you know what you're doing. Absolutely. And then I wanted to talk a little bit about the lenses that are available. So what is the widest lens that's available currently in the L mount? So, so the current, the widest lens we have currently would be the 14 to 24 to eight. Um, that's the design for mirrorless, uh, which we talked a little bit about it earlier with the mount having that, short flange back distance lets you considerably shrink the size and improve the quality of a wide angle lens. Um, it's, it's, if you get, if you go into pixel when they can open up and you pick up the difference between our DSLR version of this and our, our mirrorless version, just the weight and heft, it, it, it's the promise of a mirrorless that you always wanted. So, uh, Jack, I, what, what's your guys' widest? In the six, starts at 16, right? I, I yeah, so I always I go both ways. So um, the widest is 16 to 35. Okay. Um, and then we also have, in a, just to go to the most telephoto, uh, we've got a 70 to 200, an F4, as well as F2.8. And two mm -hmm. teleconverters. So, you know, let's say you want something larger. Don't forget we've got two teleconverters. They're both available at Pixel that you can basically extend the range of your lens. Excellent. So again, these are things that other companies, when they first came out, they didn't have these lens op options. And to have, I believe it's over, is it over 20 now in the total lineup? Oh gosh, with, with Leica 16, we're, 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 we're boarding on 40 lenses. So 40 lenses for the system. That's a very mature system. I mean, and you have different, you have, what's great about the system is you have different price points that they're hitting as well. So again, they kind of leapfrog the entire industry because they have all these lenses that are now available. So it's a huge, huge opportunity for you know anybody looking to get into the L mount or get into you know a new mirrorless camera. So let's look at a couple of these other questions that we have here. Um, are all Sigma lenses uh, that you guys have come out for L mount are they all full frame or do you guys have crop lenses as well? So everything we've made so far is a full frame lens. Um, until there's a more widely available crop sensor camera, I don't see us doing that. Uh, just in general, uh, it's easier to make a, a really good full frame lens, and if somebody wanted to use it on a crop sensor, they could too. So, um, but in general, since almost every every camera currently is a, is a full frame camera, everything covers full frame. And I think yep. that's a good point because not all, you know, in your case, they're all full frame. Panasonic's are all full frame. Do you guys know if Leica is all full frame? All their no, definitely out? not. And and that's the and that's the thing. It's the, the CL, for example, is is crop. And when I think it's really cool, I can't speak to the FP on this, but I know in our cameras, when you put the a crop sensor L mount lens on there, it automatically punches in, so it only covers the APS-C region. So uh, it's really cool that you don't have to think about it. It just automatically does it. I assume it probably does that on the, uh, on the uh, FP as well. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So even if you do want that smaller, more compact lens, and let's say you're shooting with something like an S1R, and you have all the megapixels in the world, now just using that center portion where we're kind of shrinking it down, we're still going to have that nice, small, lightweight lens. 
with that body so we can take it out and uh, shoot with it and not have to carry the larger lenses when we don't want to. Again, yeah, very yeah, I, would just, I would just tell you to, you know, keep the resolution and shoot the 45 to eight. And then you get a <laughs> that is a very gorgeous lens. I love it. So a question that I have too, do you guys have, are there, do you guys, are there primes out? Are there, and are there any macro lenses? So, uh, you know, we do have our full line of art lenses, art primes available. So, you know, there's 11 of them. I can give you them all, uh, 14, 20, 24, 28, 35, uh, 40, 50, 85, 105, 135, and a 70 macro. Dang, you're good. So there is a macro option as well. Yes. And then, and that's, those are the art lineup that's been, the art primes that have been developed. We do have a 3512 um, that was developed for mirrorless specifically. And then we have a couple, a couple of zooms. So there, there's, a, we have a ton of primes. Um, you know, I know Panasonic makes a 50 that's absolutely stunning. So um, that was designed for the system too. So uh, do you guys have any other primes, Jack? I can't remember off the top. No, of that's a hundred percent of our primes, but we, uh, we got quality. Yeah, um, it's, it's beautiful. Motor design, it's awesome. Again, we built the system. It was about no compromises in the lens as well as the optic, uh, the lens as well as the bodies. Um, I will say um, there is another lens available for Leica, but uh, it's my understanding it's crop lens, whereas the uh, Sigma 70 millimeter is full frame. So uh, it's nice to be able to use that maximum resolution. Whether you have a lot of resolution in your camera or a lot of the mirrorless cameras these days have things like focus stacking, focus bracketing, and you just want to get as much detail in the frame as possible. Excellent. So let's jump into just technology wise too, because you guys also, we've been talking about a lot about lenses, but I want to talk about bodies as well. So tell me a little bit, we'll start with Brian. So tell yeah. me a little bit about the FP, like what, what is the FP? Why is it important? And what are some of its most important features that people should know about? So, um, I'm totally unprepared, so I'm going to be very unprofessional. Walk up and grab one. <laughs> so the FP is illustrated best by putting it in your hand. So this is the world's smallest full frame camera, as I as as far as I know. So you know somebody might have one out there, but it's a really small, lightweight full frame camera. L mount, obviously. This has the 45 on it. Um, takes amazing stills though. Kind of the secret weapon in its arsenal though, is the ability of the camera to do cinema DNG raw 12 bit raw video in such a small compact camera. So you can obviously shoot incredibly high quality full frame video in a small package. The camera is designed to be very modular so you can build it out however you want. You can add grips, you can add, um, anything you kind of want to make it work the way you want. So uh, it's the first, you know, actually just a Bayer sensor that we've made. Traditionally, we use a technology called Fovian, but um, in this case, we're using a 24 megapixel sensor. It creates absolutely stunning images. Uh, and I think it just blends very well with the whole L-mount ecosystem. And can you look, can you show me the side of that again? Is there a tripod mount on the side and on the bottom? So on the side here, you have a quarter 20. Yeah. Where this is screwed in is a quarter 20. You got one on the bottom. So it, the idea is to be very modular. So you can put, you know, camera straps on the side. We can hook a grip on the side. Um, you know, you don't necessarily have to get a big rig for it. If you're uh, trying to build it out, you can easily attach with a magic arm, a monitor on top. You can attach different accessories you need. Um, you know, cage will help if you need to attach a lot of stuff, but if you just need to attach a couple little things to shoot some video, it, it works great. That's awesome. And it's so small and compact. And that's an electronic shutter, correct? It is. It's a fully electronic shutter. Um, so the, there's, you know, there's benefits and disadvantages of that. Um, one of the keys to keeping the camera so small was that electronic shutter though. So nice. And, and does it have and some of the cameras are all pretty much electronic sh shutter, right, Brian? I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, Jack. Most of the cameras are electronic shutter, and I think that's probably where you're positioning this. Yeah, so um, it's a kind of a hybrid camera, but I think it does have a definite video focus to it. So 
Um, it does take amazing stills, but you know, I, I see most people wanting to use it in my opinion as, as a video camera because of the high quality video out of it. And yes, most, Every cinema, every cinema camera that I know is just an electronic shutter unless we're shooting film. So. I love it. And I'm looking at the website and it looks like, I mean, everything you would look for in a modern camera, you have film profiles, you have, you know, obviously you can see one here that's built out with a follow focus with the extra monitor. You have the cinema DNG, like you said, for the, um, you know, video recording. And it looks like it even has the ability to like for the viewfinder, like director's viewfinder for Cine. So like it has the ability to use all these third party tools as well. So the modularity in this is just awesome. I mean, the fact that you can do it in such a small form factor as well is it's just an awesome little camera. And then up here, it's funny when you come to the website, they actually start with stills though. So a lot of people looked at this camera as, you know, okay, yeah, it does cinema raw. So it must only be for video, but you can see here that there are a ton of photo features built in. I mean, you have face eye detection, you have focus peaking. It looks like you even have cinemagraphs. Yeah, so the cinemagraph's not out yet. It should be coming with a firmware, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I believe it's coming with the next firmware. Um, if it doesn't show up, uh, blame somebody else besides me telling you that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it looks like you guys have film profiles too, or color profiles. Yeah. So it's not your traditional like uh, LUTs or anything you would put in there, but they're, they're definitely color profiles set up towards uh, more cinematic looks. You know, we you have a have Michael Bay version too. I mean, we, won't, we don't, I guess we can't say it's Michael Bay, but what's that really contrasting version you've got? That's the, uh, it's the beautiful teal and orange. You, you know, you're gonna, if you're, if you love the transformers um, look, you should shoot it in teal and orange. So. I'm waiting for TJ to walk away from explosion behind him. Just holding the camera. <laughs> so you can see here that teal and orange. Yeah. Boom. Oh, I love it. Okay. So Jack, what is new from Panasonic? Like they have a, the single body, but you guys have a couple of different options. So tell us a little bit about the S1 and the S1H. Like what's going on with the S series? So yeah, actually we got an ecosystem going on. So we got the regular S1, which is our hybrid piece. We got the S1R, which is a higher resolution piece, and the S1H, which is really taking Hollywood from by a storm. Uh, the H doesn't stand for Hollywood, but in my world it does. Um, we've been certified by the Netflix Post Technology uh, Alliance, so you're going to have incredibly high quality, um, good enough to be used as an A camera uh, in a cinematic uh, kind of way. Um, and good enough that Netflix would support the production of, of a feature shot on it. But what's also really exciting is not just the DS, uh, the dual native ISO, not just the color that comes out of the camera. It's got the full, in my opinion, very cam color science. So it's got V gamut. It's just really beautiful. I love the color imagery. But we do have an announcement that at the end of the month, we're also going to support ProRes RAW out the HDMI. Uh, ProRes RAW really is kind of a huge emerging industry standard. For those of you um, who are not familiar, uh, ProRes RAW is raw, so you can adjust white balance after the fact, but it is visually losslessly compressed. Um, what I like it is because my graphics card um, will be is already accelerated to use it, so my workflow really speeds up. Um, and then it's not as large as a conventional large uh, raw file. Adobe has just added support in a beta. Um, Apple um, helps create the codec, so obviously they've got support already in Final Cut. It's just a beautiful, clean-looking codec. And then unlike a lot of raw implementations, the GH, uh, sorry, the, uh, the S1H is fast enough that it's not having to do any kind of massive cropping, so you have this weird punched-in image. Um, it's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful look. You're muted, DJ. He's just muted. He's in silent mode. Yeah, sorry, the, uh, the phone was ringing, so I went to silent. Um, so what you're saying when you crop in it, or when you when you record, it doesn't have that weird crop in. You're doing full width, you don't have to- Full sensor width. Full yeah. sensor width. That, that's an awesome feature too, because if you think about it, let's say I was using a different camera and we have now that crop, or sometimes it's a crop sensor that then crops in even more, you're gonna have to have like this ultra wide angle lens just to get a normal shot. 
Whereas with the full sensor readout, you can use your lenses that you have and know that a 70 to 200 is going to be at 70, you know, where a wider lens is going to be wide. You don't have to, you know, calculate that out and figure out what it's going to be. That is Absolutely. super useful. So now can the cameras record forever? Do they have limits? Is there a difference between the S1, the S1R, the S1H? Uh, the letter is different, TJ. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, the S1 has unlimited record time, no, um, absolutely. Uh, the S, um, and we, that's always been a hallmark of Panasonic is to have, build cameras thermally so they'll work in tough environments. Um, the S1R does not have unlimited record time in 4K, um, but that's okay. Um, the S1H has its own cooling system, so it can do uh, 5.9K with unlimited record. It's, it's pretty massive. Um, and I love it because it's just designed to keep going and going and going. What people don't realize about our cameras is if you're using them for unlimited video recording, it's got USB-C with USB PD. So if you get the right power delivery system, you can just lock it down, power it up, and let it just go and go and go as long as you've got storage. That's awesome. Hey, so you mentioned, oh, go ahead, Brian. Um, is the is the ProRes RAW, is that 4K, or will you be, do, be able to do the 5.9 on the ProRes RAW? Or do you uh, both, it both will be available. Very nice. So... I, I just want to, you know, jump in one quick thing, you know, just to talk about the cameras in general. The FP is, you know, it is a full sensor readout on such a small little device, and it's actually passively cooled, and there's no record limit. As long as you have space and battery power, it'll go. So the, to me, that's one of the most impressive things about this little guy, too. So try not to do Thunder Jack, but you make good points that I had to piggyback on. No, I mean, that's the thing is, like, people have all these mysterious reasons why cameras don't have a limited recording time. Um, a lot of it's thermal. Thermal is the biggest uh, is the biggest challenge. As I always say in my things, Brian laughs at this. There is no replacement for displacement. Uh, it's somewhere the heat has to go. You should have been a science teacher, Jack. <laughs> It'd be a cautionary so tale, TJ. Cautionary tale. <laughs> I have. I do have a question. So you mentioned that the S1H had been certified by Netflix. Is it in production with any of it? And also, Brian, do you know of any like lenses? Like, are the lenses also being used on set? Tell us a little bit about that, because that's not really a world that a lot of people know about. So, I can't speak to something that's currently a couple projects have shot um, are in the process of wrapping up. I'm really kind of hesitant, <laughs> given this current climate, to say uh, they're done. But uh, right now, there are several productions underway uh, from studios that you would have heard of. But uh, I can't confirm anything that's that's in the can right now, just mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that it comes out. A timely man. Sure. So as far as just Sigma in general, um, it just speaks to the quality of our lenses. We do have a full set of uh, cinema lenses, so which you can get at Pixel. Um, mm -hmm. But our, our big – so we, we have a bunch of like Amazon and uh, shows that have been shot with our cinema lenses. And the cool thing about our cinema lenses, it's using the exact same glass that's inside our still lenses. So these multi-million dollar budgets – um, like Top Gun, anybody heard of that? Uh, have the chance to use, are using their lenses as like an A lens and they're good enough for Hollywood. So they're taking that same glass. You can get the same glass in your still lenses that, you know, they're, you know, shooting Tom Cruise in a million, billion dollar budget feature. So, you know, if you, if you want to see what the lenses kind of kind of look like, if you look at a, couple of the middle seasons of Sneaky Pete on uh, Amazon. Um, that's there, you know, uh, some of the pre some of the preacher stuff on EMC has been shot with Sigma glass. So there's a lot of stuff being used out there. They're affordable, relatively speaking, and the quality is just amazing. And you guys can get the same quality with, you know, just the Sigma art stuff. I mean, we're not, I mean, the housing and the way they're built and the, the use case is different but uh, the glass is the same, so. Awesome. Now for you guys, is there anything, like if you, let's say you were running your respective companies, um, what lenses would you say you would like to have added to the lineup that aren't there currently? Uh, I, I know what, I, I'm, I'm guessing that Jack will agree with me. So we, I would love to see a super telephoto for me, uh, the L mount. You know, yep. 150 to 600, 60 to 600 design for L mount. I think that's kind of the, the missing piece to the ecosystem right now. So that's that's what I would love to see. 
Business Jack would agree with that. Um, Business Jack would love uh, something really long. Um, I like a 600 millimeter more. Emotional Jack, the passion craft Jack, would be the uh, 180 millimeter macro. Oh, nice. Let's do it. I know that all seven people would want it, but I'm one <laughs> of seven people when I'm in charge, so I can order it. That's right. But, uh, passion, passion Brian wants an 85 knot, you know, 85.9. Yeah, nothing's in focus. It's an it's an art piece. If anybody could sell that either of those lenses, it would be Jack. He can sell the art of what's possible. So one thing that I really loved about shooting the S1R is the you know the size of the files. But is that like is that the is that what people should be looking at in a camera? Is it you know what are some of the features that people should be looking for when they are making that purchase? of a camera is it file size is it ibis is it you know what would you recommend to them either one of you when they're looking to make that purchase into an l mount camera like what sets you guys apart from the other vendors that are out there can i go not se semi non-technical first sure ergonomics if you don't like using the camera you're not going to use the camera what i really like about our cameras is Every, almost everything that Panasonic builds has discrete dials and switches, so they're hard physical controls. That means I don't have to dive into menus all the time, so I get more keepers. Um, I like the fact that our viewfinder is so amazingly high resolution. It is incredible, and I think that makes me a more active photographer because what I see is what I get, and what I see looks like it will eventually on my screen. And then, yes, to your point, TJ, I love IBIS, but I think IBIS gets a bad rap for the wrong reasons. I think people just stop by saying, oh, it has five axis image stabilization. But they're kind of discounting two things. One, how much can the sensor really travel in the mount? How effective are these axes, so to speak? And do, um, do you have something that has dual stabilization? I think that's the long-term future for stabilization is body plus lens talking together. I think that those kind of options really changed my photography and, uh, and made them a lot more fun. Your serve, Brian. <laughs> um, I'm going to be the guy, uh, in general, you know, I, I sold cameras. I worked in a camera store. So I always, I always go, what are they going to use it for? You know, are you, are you a product photographer? Well, and do you need the resolution? Well, then you need an R. Um, there's, you know, if you, if you're a hybrid shooter, then you, you need the S1 or even like an FP, you know, if you're just a, a video shooter, you know, Walk up and get the S1H. You're not going to be disappointed. Um, I think there's an option. The, the cool thing about the whole ecosystem, there's an option for almost everybody right now, you know, and anything we add is going to be like kind of a bonus thing. So I, I will go back to, uh, I do think the S1 series does have the most amazing viewfinder I've ever seen. So, uh, and bang for a buck. It's a lot of camera. I think, you know, my, my, my friend Mike in Ohio is a, uh, He's watching, you know, and Mike, if you had to get a new camera, I think the S1 would be great for him because, you know, it, it really has a great viewfinder. It's going to feel comfortable in his hand. It's going to get bigger hands. He would really enjoy the experience and just that Panasonic color. So I think I know Mike in Ohio. So I'm going to say Mike would enjoy how wide of a lens you can get on this too. Like the 14 yeah, to 24, I, I think Mike would enjoy that lens. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think he would really love it. And then, you know, he's, he started to do a lot more wildlife and the weather ceiling because, you know, he's outdoors a lot. So, yeah. you know, when it's raining, that 70 to 200. But even your 135, um, don't sleep on that. If you're taking lizard photos, when he likes to do those, they're really sharp. Um, Mr. Mike Amico. Yes, yes, yes. I'm surprised there was not a fruity drink comment that was thrown in there. So what, Jack, as we're coming to a close here, we're going to be wrapping up here very soon. What is your favorite Panasonic camera of all time? All time. Okay, now, I'm never going to give you one answer because people give me um, – look at me crazy when I say this. So here's the one that I really like that's not – it's a mainstream camera. I think the FZ300 is the killer of all killer bridge cameras. And the reason is TJ knows I shoot a lot of macro. It can fo close focus up to a centimeter, and the fact that it can close focus up to a centimeter means I can get crazy macros 
and it's dust and splash resistant with the constant F28. There is nothing like the Swiss Army knife in the world. Oh, and by the way, it's less than 500 bucks. In terms of my favorite body, I always am kind of switching between an S1 um, and uh, a G9. They're both awesome. But uh, something in there, I, I really, I'm an ergonomics guy. So if I don't like it in my hand, I'm not going to like it on a trail. If I don't like it on a trail, why did I go hiking? Absolutely. And Brian, what is your favorite camera of all time? And it doesn't have to be L-mount. It could be any camera of all time. Because Sigma, well, the great thing about Sigma is they are, that you know, when they come to the party, everybody except for Fuji likes them. They hang out with them. And so they work with Canon, Nikon, all of them. So what is your favorite? Uh, everybody should own a DP0. A what? Exactly. Seriously? <laughs> it's a cool, it's a really cool, but do I, explain why the camera's so cool other than it's Fovion. So it's a Fovion sensor, so that it's a small, pocketable, incredibly wide angle APS-C camera. Uh, it has a lot to love about it. It's quirky, it's weird. Um, and that man would love it. Yeah, it's, it's, I'll send you one, TJ. There you yeah. go. Wrong. That's the only place that actually has it. We don't carry those, unfortunately. <laughs> we do that, not. Have that, it. that was great, TJ. <laughs> so, what other? I want to open it up to the audience. What other questions do you have? Do we have any questions about the L Mount Alliance? I have a question. Is there anything that's coming up that people should be excited about from either of your companies that is or that is public knowledge? Like what do we have around the corner? Uh, we have, uh, what exactly makes it into the firmware is, I'm not 100% sure, but the FP has almost, uh, it almost makes it a new camera when the, the firmware launches this summer. So I'd say if you have been on the fence or you heard about the FP, when the new firmware launches, we'll make a big deal about it. Take a look at it again. It'll add a ton of functionality to, to the camera. Excellent, anything get, from Panasonic? Oh, I'm gonna be boring. I'm, we're you know around two weeks away from ProRes Raw. It's the What's game changer. I was gonna say that's gonna be a huge thing. And how hard is that? Like, what will users have to do to get that update? Like, what do they have to do? They should they should go to Pixel Connection and get a Ninja Five, um, because that's what you're gonna need to record it to. So the firmware update is gonna be really painless, just like something normally we do. But you're gonna definitely want to go you have a Ninja Five because it will not internally record. So just directly to HDMI to your Ninja. Put an SSD in there, and you'll be ready to rock and roll. Excellent. So I wanted to, as questions are coming in, I want to just share just a couple announcements that we have about what's around the corner. And uh, both Panasonic and um, Sigma will be at Pixel Photo Fest this year. So we're still planning to do it. Uh, everything is still in motion August 14th through 16th. And Sigma is going to be there renting FPs for you to borrow. They're going to have lenses. Sigma is going to have, or I'm sorry, Panasonic is going to have cameras and bodies for you to borrow. Again, we have some of the best speakers in the industry that are going to be speaking. Again, we have James Schmelzer. We have Mackenzie Deakins. We have Melissa Hogan, William Innes, Brian Muneer, all amazing photographers, um, especially like the ones here. There's four of these. These are Panasonic and Sigma speakers. So they are there to show you the ropes. And for everybody that is still watching, you can actually save 100 bucks by using code lunch and learn at checkout, which brings your three-day conference price down to $99. So again, you're not gonna find a better deal for that. And by then, hopefully we can get out and we can you know, do some photography and it's all types of photography. It's stills, it's video, it's, you know, we're going to have a full line of models. We're going to do macro. We're going to do a little bit of everything. So definitely check that out. I also want to let you guys know that this week's photo contest, you can win 50 bucks by entering your black and white photo into our contest. And to do that, all you have to do is follow us at the .pixel connection, or use hashtag the pixel connection and hashtag pixel BW. So that way I know what photos you want to enter. I also want to let you know that Tether Tools is still doing their 10% off until May 31st. And also we're partnering with Sigma to raise money for local food banks, in particular the Cleveland Food Bank. So 5% of your lens purchase goes directly to people in need here in Cleveland. So if you've been thinking about picking up that new you know, long lens to shoot the eagles or the foxes that are around here, or if you're looking to 
grab that art lens for wedding season coming up, now is the time to do it because that money is going directly to people in need. If you do need additional help, please let us know. We have virtual one-on-ones that we're doing each and every day where we jump onto a session similar to this one and we answer the questions that you have. It could be about your camera. It could be about how to do something like live streaming. Maybe you wanna get started with live streaming or start a podcast. We will sit down with you for that time and teach you one-on-one. -on -one. And if you do need that, there is the link there or you can always just reach out to social at thepixelconnection.com. So tomorrow we are working with Tamron to go over the Tamron lens lineup. On Friday, we're gonna have the Friday Focus, which is where we talk about the industry news. And Monday, I'm still, we're still figuring out the details, but uh, we have an amazing speaker who I believe is gonna be talking about landscape. So he, ha he shoots a lot of different things, so I don't want to, um, and we might go in a different direction. So tomorrow, my goal is to share who we will have up next for that. If you do have questions, please feel free to reach out, sales at thepixelconnection.com. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, or give us a call. Or now you can even stop in. The store is open for our normal store hours. So please feel free to stop in the store, say hi. We are here to serve you guys. So I wanna thank both Brian and Jack for spending time with us today. It was great seeing you guys and thank you for answering all of the questions. Thanks, thank TJ. Give my best to Raul. I will. Yeah. Well, I'll fly. I miss him. <laughs> Not you, but him. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. I hope everybody has an awesome week. We'll see you. Thanks, TJ.